just like in 2021, it was at 65 and then Pierce 65 going to 69. Here it pierced essentially 69 and change and went to 73. Hello everyone, another night of BTC price losses. These so far bottoming at $60,760 on Bitstamp. Now down 17.5% versus its all-time highs, BTC slash USD continued to field selling pressure thanks to several key headwinds. Our guest Gareth Soloway, who already warned of this sharp pullback, is now looking at the Bitcoin latest charts and analyzes the trend to come up with the key near-term price target. Soloway also dissesses the macro, the Fed, inflation, and more in this video. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Looking at this again, we know we confirmed below based on the confirmation signal. What that tells us is that today we could even go back up here, but this will be major resistance. This would be major. And again, you'd expect it to get rejected and continue to break down. The only way that gets negated is if you reconfirm above this line. Once you confirm below a line, you must then confirm back above the line to negate the breakdown. By the way, that goes for a breakout as well. So again, if we have a chart here and we're hammering on resistance, right, and we break out and we confirm, it can retest here. That's a buying opportunity. In, in, the, in, the, in the metrics and probabilities, the likelihood is it'll bounce off of it like that and go up. However, there, we, as we know, not charts aren't 100%. It's all probability-based. If it gets below, it's okay, but if it confirms, then that negates the breakout. And one of the things I've learned is the biggest moves come from failed moves. So if you get a breakout and then it fails and reconfirms back below, oftentimes you get a big move to the downside and vice versa on the other side as well. All right, so that's the chart of the QQQ. If we look at the SPY, the S&P, the S&P is a little bit more muted today. What we're seeing is this is where we closed yesterday, sideways consolidation, a little bit of a float up, and we've really come back down essentially flat to negative on the S&P. And again, I expect us to kind of trade around that range going into the FOMC decision here uh, at 2 p.m. Going to the daily chart, remember, this is an unconfirmed breakdown. The difference between confirmed and unconfirmed is probability. So when you are below the line, probabilities still favor that you'll break lower, but the probabilities are like 60-ish percent, 55 percent, barely over the 50-50 line. Once you confirm, history shows us that those now, the probabilities now shift heavily to the downside, like 70 percent chance. Still 30 percent chance it can fail, but again, when we're dealing with probabilities in trading, that's a really important differential to pay attention to. So again, we closed below, no confirmation, and obviously yesterday, no confirmation. We have to watch this level today, or if we confirm, we have to close below this level. Now, it may, it may be that we just don't confirm today either, and it kicks the can into the road into tomorrow or Friday or next week, but that's something that I'll be watching, and I'll guide you guys on this. When we go live today at 2 o'clock or just before 2 p.m. at 1.50 p.m., I'll be guiding you guys as we see the reaction, what that could mean for the daily chart of the S&P 500. All right, so here's your Boeing chart. Boeing, again, taking a dump out on that little bit of news this morning. We know this stock has been hammered. It's actually got a reasonable bounce. Now, we're trading around 178. Now, I want to show you the daily chart here. So if we go to the daily chart, look at this, folks. This is a major technical level here. So again, we talked about this, how we broke lower. Once you broke the longer term channel, you were destined to go down here. And if you just go back a week or two in these game plans, I literally said, guys, this is your zone right here. All right, so that still is the zone. This is right around this 175-ish level to 176. So even pre-market, we've touched that level. This remains a big support level. Um, if it breaks, there's a little bit more support around 170. But in general, this is kind of where I start looking at it and I say, okay, depending on if the market stays strong, right? So I mean, if the stock market really collapses, we know the NASDAQ 100's already broken down. S&P not quite yet in terms of confirming the breakdown. But if the market stay okay, then this should get a retrace bounce here to the scene of the crime, right? But you remember, Remember, if you're a swing trader, and let's just say it does bounce, where's your target? Right here. Would you get greedier than that? And the answer is no, 
because this would be a retrace. So here you close below, here you confirmed, retrace to the scene of the crime, it should, probability should tell you it gets rejected there. So again, it's really about looking at the charts and think about every move in a chart, the probabilities. Think about it like for those of you that watch poker and they show you the odds every time a new card is shown or situations like that. That's what essentially every time you get a new candle in the chart, the odds are recalculating on whatever the probabilities were of a move in one direction. Good way to think about it. So the point is that if we do get a bounce off this 175-ish level, your exit strategy, or at least my exit strategy, would be at the 200 retrace to the scene of the crime. Because again, not only do you have that trend line there, but look at all this sideways chop, which is a lot of buyers and sellers. There's a lot of buyers down here that then they got flushed and they're like, oh crap. Once they get back to break even, a lot of the tendency is for investors to say, you know what? I, you know, it was a scary trade, it flushed on me, I'm gonna exit, and that creates that sell side action as well. All right, a couple other charts I wanna go over. Here's Chipotle. Chipotle trading at 29.33 pre-market. Here's when the announcement was made of the stock split. Look at that move up, a lot of sideways chop. Here we can clearly see that you have this point here, connected here, and then it got rejected right there. You have these lows, low, low and low. Now again, wedge patterns that are angled to the upside, right? So if you have something like this, all right, generally, I would say about 60 to 70% of the time, they will break to the downside. However, if they don't, you can get a very explosive move up. So just be aware, it's not, I don't like to jump the gun in these situations unless I have multiple other factors. But what I would say is that if we do confirm below the wedge, that's where you get a substantial fall in the stock. So it's, this one is now on watch as this band gets narrower, this wedge pattern gets narrower and narrower. And by the way, just to show you guys odds, you know, remember everything we do here in game plan is all about odds. Which way did this one break? This is the NASDAQ 100, broke to the downside. All right, now which way did the spiders one break? Well, as of now, it's unconfirmed, but it broke to the downside. So again, you will eventually come across charts that break to the upside when they have this pattern, but it certainly is less. If you look at a thousand of them or a hundred of them, the probabilities again favor the downside from these tighter and tighter wedge patterns that are forming, okay? Um, quickly again, just looking at Meta here. Meta again, I do think that this is a shortable play here. And again, I am short on Meta, just to be fair. Um, but again, the idea here is very simple, is that you're into this major resistance area right up here. And look at this move, this is a monthly chart. You very rarely see this type of explosive move to the upside. I think part of this was that it had such a dramatic move to the downside, it would have to play catch up. But again, one of the things to look at here is you also have, if you take this low to this high, that distance, right? And then you do this low to this high, it's virtually the same distance, essentially a measured move as well. All right, guys, so what I wanna do now is we're gonna come back to center screen here and we are gonna spin the wheel of appreciation. Now, I just wanna quickly talk about what we have on this wheel. Again, it pierced just like, and the, the crazy thing about this is Bitcoin pierced the, just like in 2021, it was at 65 and then pierced 65 going to 69. Here it pierced essentially 69 and change and went to 73 and changes. And again, those type of things, these are things that I watch for. But the kicker is this, is that after such a dramatic move up, you just don't want to buy breakouts. Like, like this is one of the biggest, and this drives me nuts because there's so many top supposed pros out there that are like, oh, we broke 70, it's clear sailing, okay, here we go. And it's like, no. Like, and by the way, it doesn't mean it won't keep going in those situations, but you, don't, you just don't chase. Chasing is like the, the literally the cardinal sin of investing is when you chase. First of all, there's always another investment. There's always a pullback. Think about in Bitcoin's history. You know, you know, every bull cycle, there's always a massive drawdown. And so, you know, is this the drawdown? Maybe we did hit technical support, right? So, I mean, you can look at it and say, okay, well, we hit this level right in here. That's technical support. At least you're buying it on a pullback. Like, don't be buying it above 70. I mean, I don't know. To me, that just... It, it's one of the reasons why I almost went broke multiple times as an early trader trying to buy breakouts because it just, in, it, it's, it's, the breakouts get people to get emotional and jump in because, oh my God, it's, it just broke the high. It's a new, and, and the media like, oh, it's a new high. And then what is it doing? It's suckering in people that eventually they want to rug pull on. And when I say they buy, this is, this is just market psychology. It's no one in particular, but it's just the way things work. I mean, go back to charts. By the way, in 2007, in the market, in the S&P, this was what the market looked like. 
okay? All right, that, this is the Great Recession, right? Great Recession. But this was your dot-com high, and this was your, your 2007 high. And you broke that high pivot by a fraction, and then it literally, it had one of the biggest drawdowns in market history since like the Great Depression, not, not necessarily the biggest, but still it was a massive drawdown of 60 plus percent in the S&P. So my point is again, is that you have to be able to fight the urge and it's so hard to do, trust me, I see this happening all the time. For me, I've changed the way my brain works where I start to say, all right, wait, it's breaking. If I don't see the monthly or the weekly or this, then I'm not gonna trust it. I, confirmation, the confirmation signal is a massive help to that. But these are the things that really keep me safe. Now, having said that, Bitcoin has pulled back. We got very close to 60,000. As I said, lots of good support in this range. Let's see how it acts. Is it going to make a bear flag, right? Bear flag would be like this, in which case you're gonna go down here and there's a big level right here and if the former spot ETF right in here. So this is my, my zone, right? My zone is right here, 52 to 48 basically, 52 to 49. So the question is, are we gonna reverse like this, which would be bullish, right? then I would trust it if we get a weekly close above that 69 level, or is it gonna bear flag, which then means probability start to favor the downside. And this as a trader is so important. It's like, you know, one of the biggest issues with newer investors, a lot in this, of this in crypto is that they get so hung up on like, oh, I gotta become a millionaire so quickly. So the only narratives I'm gonna think about are going to be the bull case where it goes to 100K by next month. And, and what ends up happening is that's where you go wrong, is you have to, as an investor, plan out both scenarios. They will guide you, the charts will guide you. The charts are a foreign text. Like imagine I give you a book in a language you don't know. And what your job is to do is to do is to learn how to read that text, that foreign text. That's what a chart is. So the more you read it, the more you start to understand what it's telling you. Now, sometimes we, we read it and we still get it wrong, which is the nature of charts, but oftentimes you'll understand better what the likelihood is for the price action. All right, by the way, yesterday, Cardano, I, guys, I gave you guys this level yesterday on Cardano. This is the same, literally the same line, hasn't moved one bit on Cardano. And again, by the way, do I think Cardano's gonna rip back up? A ton, no, but I mean, if you're just talking about a technical level for a quick little trade, this was it. I gave it to you guys yesterday. Look at that, right there, and look at the bounce already. Now, where is this gonna have resistance? Right up here, right in this zone. So you're, you know, you're going back to like 63 to 64, maybe 65 cents, um, but that's from 57 cents right here, which isn't a bad move percentage-wise, and these are more the quick little trades that I like to do. I like to stay nimble. I like going to bed mostly in cash, definitely more on a positive side. Take a look at INJ real quick. Um, INJ hit a major technical level as well. Look at this trend line. Now, the reason why I'm paying attention to this trend line is because number one, you should get a bounce, right? Number two, if this ever breaks, holy cow, you got a lot of downside, guys. So just be aware, if you're someone that's in INJ or if you're interested in INJ, just you really want it to hold this level. This is a massive support. Look at how many times it's hammered on it. If this breaks, you get a watershed moment with a big move to the downside. All right, a couple more charts here I wanna go over. And by the way, I saw someone asked for uranium. So of course, I'll, I'll cover uranium today. Gold, there's not much going on here. Very simply put, we're still making a, what I would consider to be a bullish pattern here, a flag pattern there. There's your, there's your flag pole right up there. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.